Hi, this is Rob McLaughlin. Welcome to Sound Advice. Today we're going to take a look at ringing out my uh, mains and monitors. We can use the same process for both. And specifically on the uh, Q16. Here we go. All right, so one of the first things we want to do is make sure that uh, you understand that uh, when we're doing this uh, ring out process to ring out our speakers, uh, you want to do it in a controlled environment. Uh, don't try to do this when you've got an audience and a venue um, because you'll get a lot of very upset people at you. Uh, you want to make sure that it's a controlled environment. If uh, loud volumes bother you, uh, your ears or whatever, make sure you wear some ear protection. I'll try my best as we're going through this uh, video to try and keep the uh, extra noise to a minimum. But essentially what we are going to do is we are going to try and push a microphone into, uh, into feedback. We're going to force it into feedback so we can pick out the, the individual frequencies where it's feeding back, notch those frequencies out using the graphic equalizer, and that's how we're essentially going to ring out our, uh, our speaker. So in this case, I'm going, to do, uh, I'm going to do it for the left and right. So I'm here at my uh, Q16. And first thing I'm going to do is I have set up a microphone on uh, channel 1. I've set the channel gain to unity uh, on the uh, gain. Let me just change this here. You can see that for this channel, selecting this channel, I've set the gain to roughly about what that gain might be uh, for, you know, normal speaking. This is a standard SM58. Uh, it's it's uh, not a bad setting. I've also made sure that on this channel that I have turned off a high, high pass and I have turned off the parametric EQ. Again, that's for this microphone. So this microphone is essentially as flat as I want it to be. Next I'm going to go to, over to my left and right mains. I select my left and right mains. Then I can select the uh, graphic EQ uh, tab on the window. And when I do that, I can then come over to the graphic uh, flip. Now this is a great, great function and feature of the Q-series boards. Uh, I know lots of other boards have them too, but I really like the way this is set up on the Q-series. So by hitting the, flader, the fader flip, oh boy, hitting the fader flip, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to turn our faders into our controls for our graphic EQ. And you can see that the graphic EQ is lit up now because I've got a 30 band EQ, but I only have a 16 channel set of sliders. It has to do it in two sets. So when I hit the flip again, it moves to the second half with a bit of overlap in the middle, which is quite handy. Hit it a third time, my faders go back to normal control. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I've got my microphone set up. I'm selecting left and right, and I am going to flip the faders so that I can see the first set. And then I'm going to very, very slowly, and I can't stress this enough, very slowly and very controlled, I'm going to start bringing up the uh, main left and right. Again, if I can show you the back of the board here, all I have uh, hooked up is that single microphone connection and a single speaker connection. And all I'm doing is I'm going to ring out left and right. So here we go. Turn off the mains. I've got my fader flip so I can see my first half of my faders. And very, very slowly and very controlled, I'm going to start bringing up that fader until, and what you're going to find is that when you get a frequency that starts to, to ring, uh, of course, it's going to be uh, kind of loud maybe in this room, but you're going to see it peak across the meters. All right. So what I'm watching for is for a frequency that's going to peak in the peak meters here. Again, very slowly bringing up left and right because I want to bring it back down very quickly when I need to. Ooh, there we go. Now, it didn't light up here, which tells me it's probably on a higher frequency. And again, I'm, as soon as I hear that, I'm bringing it back down. But you can see there's my peak. Let's try that one more time. There's the peak. Again, very slowly with left and right. And there's the peak. So what I'm going to do is bring that frequency down a bit. And we'll bring it down there. All right, so I'm going to go through and repeat this, and uh, maybe on the video I'll try and speed this up a little bit. Again, very slowly, bringing up left and right, listening and watching for peaks. That one's kind of low, it's not there, so it's right there. 
bring that down a little bit. A little bit more left and right pushing. It sounds like it's going to be higher. It is higher there, same frequency, but I'm bringing it down. It peaked here. I'm bringing it down a little bit more. Okay, and a little bit more. And I'm approaching unity, which is good. Okay, there it is right there. All right. again right there just want to turn it down a little bit at a time till I get more and more now again you, you'll notice of course that I've exaggerated uh, the proximity of that microphone to the speaker there's the top one but there's a low one so go down here yeah there's the low one again notch that till the peak goes out and back up now you see where my left and right is I'm getting if you can see that, I'm getting just above unity here. Yeah? So this is fairly loud. I'm still getting, even when I talk in this room, I can make that microphone, you know, pick up a little bit more on that same frequency. Oops. Again, pulling it down. Always keeping, always keeping my finger on that. Left and right, so I don't want this to run away. That could, somebody could get, uh, there we go. There's a peak right there. Again, somebody would... Uh, you do not want to do this in a room with people in it or where you might have a crowd. This is something you got to do ahead of time. There we go. I'm going to pull that peak out. I had a low one there, so let me try and catch that one. Where is that low peak? There it is right there. Now I'm going to pull it down. You might pull either side of that down just a little bit too. And I see this one still. This is right in the vo vocal range right there. That's the 400 notch. So. That's a pretty hot frequency, actually, for a typical 58 anyway. All right, a little bit further. That one's kind of high. There it is right there. Pull that down a little bit. All right, and I am almost up to plus 5, which is pretty good. I'm going to notch that there. Okay. And a little bit more. Oh, there we go. Again, down here. See, I'm getting to plus five. Now, plus five is pretty hot. Uh, two, two, one, two, even if I shout in this room, uh, that microphone is now so hot, it's, it's going to pick up a lot of me just talking in the room. Okay, I'm, I'm at plus five on masters, and even, uh, that one's kind of low. Oops, it's on the low side, so where is that frequency on the low one? There it is. And there's a high one in there, too. Looked like there. Again, as soon as I hear it, I'm pulling that master down. I'm never letting go of this master over here with my thumb and, and pulling that down as soon as I hear it, just so that I, I don't damage anybody's hearing. I, again, if this bothers you while you're doing it, I recommend some hearing protection. Grab yourself some uh, earplugs and so that you can do it. Now, I'm way over plus five. I don't know, hope you can see that on there. I'm way over plus five and and... Um, that's, that's way above where I would, way above, oops, that's my microphone. Again, you got to watch that third flip is, is, uh, back to regular faders. So I, did, I thought I was pulling down frequency, but I was pulling down the microphone. So two, 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 two. I'm sort of shouting in the room here a little bit and, and that microphone's picking it up. Two, 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 even now here's the thing. I've got this slider all the way down. And it's still peaking. Two, two, two. We'll deal with that one in a minute. All right. So uh, let's just see what else we can do. Again, my slider. Uh, sorry. Again, my slider is way, way above plus five. And I would never, ever operate with that much at plus five. There we go. At plus five. There we go. So I'm watching for those peaks and grabbing them to pull them out there. And I can get this almost to the point where, you know, I can get this right up to to full maximum. And I would never, ever run that left and right up there. But now, there we go. We've got a, a pretty good uh, mix. It's got a lot, of, a lot of stuff pulled out of it, but let's deal with the next part of that. Okay, so our next step then is to deal with some of the uh, exaggerated 
uh, frequencies that we've got. So I'm going to bring my uh, mains back to uh, Unity. I can even shut them off for this moment just so that we don't have anything jumping out at us. And if I go back and look at my, uh, my, my graph now, you can see I've got one, two, three. I'm going to pick out, say, the one, two, the three most offending frequencies. So in my case, if I look closely, that would be 400 and 5K, uh, four, 400, 4K, and 5K. And those are, quite honestly, very typical and also fairly typical for the... Um, SM58 that we're using for this test. Now I also said that if we go back and look at for instance that where's the slider uh, for that uh, 4k if I look at there's the the slider for the 4k that's this one here I've got it down as far as I could Even going through that process a moment ago I, I brought it down as far as I could bring I couldn't bring it down anymore but I was still getting a peak light so how we're we gonna deal with that well we're gonna go back to uh, again back to the actual turn off the, the flip here back to channel one that microphone so I not only do I have uh, control over the uh, EQ for left and right I have control over each individual microphone so I know I've got you know an extra frequency at 400 uh, 4k and 5k so I'm going to take those three fre frequencies pardon me and I'm going to use the parametric EQ on this microphone so again I'm looking at channel one hopefully you can see here channel one I'm looking at channel one, and I'm going to use my parametric EQ. Um, doesn't you've got four bands? Doesn't matter which one you use, but I will take the first band, and I will deal that dial that to 5k. All right, roughly 5k, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to notch that as narrow as I can. I want this to be a very uh, 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 a very short uh, peak, so I'm going to notch that. Uh, which means turning all the way up to it actually says one ninth and then I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to reduce that by oh well you know let's go to about 5 dB that should be pretty good to start 5 or 6 dB I'm going to go to 6 dB just for fun so to 6 dB now again let me go back here again I'm I'm using the the touch screen because I'm just I'm just uh, comfortable doing that. But you can do exactly the same thing using the controls here. Those are the three controls that match up with those three, those three uh, configurations. So let me do the second one. Again, I'm going to turn the parametric EQ on. And the second one, I'm going to uh, roll this up to one ninth. That means it's the narrowest possible uh, frequency. I don't want a great big wide frequency. I just want a little notch. I'm going to set the frequency to 4K. Uh, where's 4K? Uh, I do find I get a finer adjustment. So if I'm kind of in the neighborhood and I can't get it here, this usually gets a finer adjustment. And then again, the bottom, let's take it down to uh, minus 6 dB, uh, somewhere in there, 5.9. Yes, that's close enough. So there's 4K and 5K, and you'll see, of course, 4K and 5K are very, very close together. So uh, the fourth one we said was 400. So again, I'll go back here. I'll set this to 400. You know, I'm going close. Uh, again, crank this all the way up. I want a tiny little notch there, and then the, uh, I'm going to cut by 6 dB. So that gives me a starting point for uh, a basic SM58. Now, if I really wanted, I could come back to my graphic EQ on my main, left and right, and now that four, again, I can do this on the screen too. That four, there's the 400. I could probably bring that up a little bit as well as, because I don't really want to scoop out too much of the mix. So I could bring that back up. All right. So now I think you'll find that you've got a, uh, a good starting point. And again, let me stress, that's a, this is a starting point. Um, this is not carved in stone, uh, but it is a good starting point. Uh, you could actually take this, if you're using similar speakers, 
for monitors. You know, some bands are using exactly the same speakers for front of house as they use for monitors. And you could simply use the copy and paste. So you could hit the copy, copy that EQ, go over to your mix, and then paste that same setting in that's to save re repeating the process. Again, it's a place to start. Uh, it's, uh, it gives, gets you in the ballpark. Uh, notice again what I did was one of the things is I pushed this much, much higher than I normally ever would have my masters louder. I always start my masters at minus five. Um, I know, you know, people like the idea of unity, but in, in this case for overall uh, masters, I like them at minus five. That gives me all the way up to unity uh, for, uh, you know, when I, when I need a boost, uh, if I've, if I've got everything comfortable at minus five, and I have also now in this process of ringing it out, I know that I really could, if I wanted to, I could actually push things out to plus five and I still don't, not going to get anything to ring, uh, because I have uh, notched everything out. Now, again, it's all, um, a place to start. Okay. So hopefully that helps.